Chapter 17 of the Story of Geronimo This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading done by Jules Harlock. The Story of Geronimo by Jim Kajilgard. Chapter 17 a gallant soldier sitting in the shade of some pines on the rim of a lofty mountain geronimo stared down at mexico's vapisti river from the mountain top the river looked like a silver ribbon that followed the curves of the valley and gave back the sparkle of the sun geronimo shook his head when he was a medicine man he had tried in vain to see the visions that should appear to all shamans though he was no longer a shaman visions came now he saw that long past day when he had stolen delgadito's war-horse to fight a duel of stallions with the son of ponce again he went with delgadito on the raid and saw the two papagos who had come to steal the horses. Once more he lived in his mother's wickiup and knew the love that had warmed him there. Next followed his happy days with Elope, but not the massacre of Kaskaya. Then the battle that avenged the massacre, the ambush of the California volunteers in Apache Pass, and the battles that had been since. He thought of all that had passed since his first fight with the two Papagos. Geronimo had been twelve years old then. He was fifty-eight now. He had known forty-six years of war. More visions came. Geronimo saw old Mangus Coloradus leaving the Membrino village to surrender to the white man. He saw Cochise, who fought fiercely for ten years after the death of Mangus Coloradus, but finally gave in too. No more visions appeared. Geronimo turned to Naichi, who sat beside him. You told me that you longed to see your wife, your children, your relatives, he said. I do, said Naichi. Have you no wish again to visit your blood kin? No one awaits me. Geronimo was interrupted by the whistle of a hawk. The sentry signaled that an enemy came. The sentry signaled again. The enemy was not in force. The women and children ran to hurry the horses into hiding. The men hid themselves where they could ambush their foe. In less than half a minute, not one of Geronimo's band and no horses could be seen. Presently, two Apaches appeared. One was Kieta, who had deserted Geronimo while raiding in Arizona. The second was a warrior named Martin. When the pair was well within the ambush, Geronimo and his hidden warriors sprang up. Kieta and Martin stood motionless, but both knew that, if either raised a weapon, both would die. Geronimo said, It is good to see you again, Kieta. I am here because I like you, Geronimo, Kieta said, and I like you because you led us well. I know you bear me no ill will because I left you and returned to San Carlos. Said Geronimo, if you wish to follow me no more, your own path was before you, and how can I bear ill will because you chose it? Have you now returned to me and brought Martine with you? We are here as messengers for a very gallant soldier, Kieta said. Geronimo said harshly, I treat with no soldiers. Will you hear his name? Kieta asked. Geronimo said, I will hear his name. Lieutenant Gatewood, said Kieta. Geronimo could not hide his astonishment. He knew that Lieutenant Gatewood was fierce in battle, merciful in victory, and always true to his word. With that respect which one great warrior must feel for another, Geronimo said, More than once I have met Lieutenant Gatewood in battle, but it came to my ears that he had gone far from the land of the Apaches. 
Your ears heard truly, Kieta said. Lieutenant Gatewood has been in a place so far off that I do not even know its name. But when he learned that Geronimo refuses even to talk with the soldiers who are pursuing him, he came as one whom Geronimo himself knows he may trust. How many soldiers are with him? Geronimo asked. Kieta said, There are six soldiers, all of whom serve as couriers, and none as warriors. There are two interpreters, Jose, Maria, and Tom Horn. They are all? Geronimo asked. They are all with Lieutenant Gatewood, said Kieta. But there are many soldiers not far away. Will you talk with this brave man? Geronimo gave himself to serious thought. After a while, he looked at Kieta. I will talk with him, he said, but only Lieutenant Gatewood, the six couriers, and Tom Horn, and Jose Maria. No one else must come to the meeting place. Should there be soldiers, we fight. We go to tell him, Kieta said. Geronimo said, Martin goes to tell him. Just to be sure Martin speaks truly, you stay with us until he returns. Later, Geronimo stood very still as he watched Lieutenant Gatewood and his group come near. Lieutenant Gatewood had been ill and showed it, but he was armed as a warrior should be and mounted as a warrior should be, and he was completely at ease. True to his word, he was accompanied only by the six couriers and two interpreters. Geronimo's mind took him back almost six years to a nameless canyon. He and Naichi, with a large band of well-armed warriors, had succeeded in luring a company of United States cavalry to a water hole in the canyon. The Apaches fell upon the soldiers and might have massacred every one had not the brave Lieutenant Gatewood rallied his men and led them out of the trap. Geronimo stirred uneasily. His warriors could kill these few men in less than a minute. But even as the thought occurred to him, he knew that he would never give the order to shoot, not when this gallant soldier was in command. End of chapter 17